All right, so before we move on to this next lesson here, a quick little note. Um, I brought us to the subject of view components a little sooner than I normally would. And I did that for a very specific reason. Uh, when you're browsing the web reading view tutorials, and I'm not so greedy to assume you're only watching Laracasts, um, though that would be great for me. But yeah, when you're reading these tutorials, they will almost always be using view components. And if you haven't yet been introduced to that concept, it almost feels like an entirely different beast. You'll look at it and go, I have no clue what all of this stuff is. So that's why I wanted to introduce you to the concept very early in your learning. And trust me, if you can get comfortable with this, you're gonna be unstoppable. Uh, so with, with all of that said, let's bring it all together in this episode. All right, so have a look at index.html. You can see I've reverted everything back to our initial beginning boilerplate, which means if I view this in the browser, we of course get a blank page. Okay, so now I wanna bring your attention back to the basic assignments list that we worked on a few episodes ago. Now I wanna take everything we learned about view components and apply it to something as simple as this. Okay, it sounds like the first step, and we're gonna do this incrementally. It sounds like the first step is to select everything here, cut that out, and I'm gonna move it into app.js. Now, a quick little note, sometimes it might feel gross to store all of this HTML as a JavaScript property value, um, and I can sympathize with that. Just keep in mind though, a little further along in your learning, I will introduce something known as single file components, and that solves this problem entirely. So just stay tuned a little bit longer. Okay, so now app.js has a template for all of our assignments. And notice we're referencing all of these things that need to exist, but right now they don't. Okay, that's the next step. Let's return to backup.html, and I'm gonna select the data method and those computed properties, and I will migrate that here. Okay, so I think that's everything. I can delete backup.html. And now let's quickly go through what's going on. In our script, we import our root component, and then we mount it to this div here. Our root component consists of this template here, where we have two sections that represent our assignments list. So with any luck, if I come back and refresh the page, there we go. We once again see our basic assignments. It works. Okay, so now I wanna think in terms of view components. And let's break it down, let's do this together. Um, if we were to take a look at this, what do we have here? Uh, I might say, well, these two are assignments, right? This represents our assignments section or our assignments component. And then within it, I can see two sections. There's one and there's another. They're basically the same thing. Those are, and fill in the blank, those are assignment lists. Here's one assignment list, here's another assignment list. Um, and then one more, each of these to-do items, I might call, uh, I don't know, assignment list item or simply assignment. So now if we bring that all together, we have an assignments component that consists of two assignments lists. And each of those lists consists of any number of single assignments. That would be a decent way to componentize, if that's a word, I don't think it is, to, to componentize uh, this section here. So let's see if we can make that a reality. Let's create those components that I mentioned. One of them was called assignments. That's like the outer wrapper. Another one was our assignment list, so do you want that to be plural or singular? Assignments, list, maybe singular. And then finally, we have our single assignment. All right, let's get to work. The first step, why don't we start with the outer shell? And again, that represents everything you see here. Okay, so in app.js, well, yeah, it looks like once again, I'm moving both of these sections to their new home in assignments.js, like this. All right, looks good. Next, we need to provide the data. So yeah, well, once again, we're moving these things around twice, but that's okay. Paste it in down here at the bottom. Okay, so now if nothing else, we have a new home for all of our assignments, and that home is called assignments. It just makes sense. But yeah, now 
If I switch back to app.js, it's blank, which means if I refresh the page, I don't see anything. Okay, let's pull in our component. Import assignments from assignments.js. Remember, if we want to use it, well, actually, let's just see what happens. If I try to use assignments like this, it's not going to work. Come back, refresh, and you'll see in the console, uh, we should have, there we go, a warning. Failed to resolve component assignments. So we're trying to reference a view component, but we haven't registered it. We register it by adding that components property that you learned about. And actually in future episodes, once you start learning about single file components, you'll then be able to create your tags like this. But we can't do that just yet. Okay, so come back, refresh the page, and with any luck, there we go, I can see our assignments. Okay, so we're starting to make a little bit of progress. I like this. What can we do next? Well, in assignments.js, we have two lists. So why don't we begin migrating those to our new component, assignment list? Exact same system here. Add our template and paste in the markup for an assignment list. And now for this component to work, let's see. It needs to have a collection of assignments. It needs to have a title, and then it loops over that collection and displays the data. Okay, so for this to work, it needs to be given a collection of assignments. So that would be an array. I said collection, so it should be an array. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm removing all specifics. And we'll do the same thing for title, by the way. I don't wanna hard code anything like in progress because then this component is linked to in progress assignments. And I don't want that. It can be linked to any kind of assignment list. Okay, so let's update this to title. And then I'm gonna remove any references to in progress assignments. That will now simply be assignments. Okay, and I think that's looking pretty good. So if I now switch back, let's comment out this and replace it with our new component. Import assignment list from assignmentlist.js, and then exact same system. Register it as a component, and now we can use it in our template. Assignment list. But now don't forget, in order for this component to do its job, it needs these two things. So let's pass those in as props. We need our assignments and we need a title. Okay, so this first one will be in progress assignments. So I will pass this in, but don't forget, if we do it like this, we're passing in the string in progress assignments. I don't want that. I want the value associated with that data property or that computed property. So I will use vbind or the shorthand colon. Next for the title, I'm happy for this to be a string. So I don't need to bind that to anything. Cool. So let's cross our fingers. Does this work? And it looks like it does. But now take a look at view DevTools. We have our root component. That root component consists of an assignments list and look at the highlighting there. And then within that assignments component, we have one assignment list. So the next step is to create the second assignment list doing the exact same system here. So select all of this, comment it out, and then we're gonna replace it with a new assignment list. And it looks like this one is for completed assignments. So I'll paste that in and update the title. Yeah, so notice we made assignments list generic, which means we can pass in data from the outside to configure it. So now get rid of all of this and look how much cleaner this is looking. Come back, give it a refresh, and this is working. But now notice I have two assignment list components. Okay, now we move on to the final step. Within our assignment list, we need to extract what we see here. And actually, you don't have to do anything. This is a really important point. You can, you can take this as far as you want. It's not like every single HTML tag needs to be its own component. This is where you come into play and you have to decide, uh, would it make the code cleaner? Would it make it more reusable? Is there a benefit to doing so? And what you might find is in certain cases, you just don't need to extract another component because you're never gonna use it again. It's a one-off thing, so keep it simple. Uh, but then in other situations, you will take this approach. So like everything with programming, it will largely be up to you and your team to figure out what makes sense. Okay. 
So yeah, I'm gonna move all of this into assignment. Like so. But now notice we are looping over many assignments, but that doesn't make sense. This component should be the markup for one assignment. So I'm gonna remove all of that and we will instead store that on the outside like this. Come back to assignments list. And now, yeah, we're gonna do something like assignment. And then here I could paste in that V4 and let's clean this up like that. Okay, we'll come back to this in a second, but let's finish up over here. So now for this component to do its job, it looks like it only needs an assignment object. All right, props, assignment, object. And that should do it. Cool, that was easy. So now if I switch back to my assignments list, the only custom component I have here is assignment. So I will import that. This should all be super familiar to you at this point. I then register it as a component. And now I can use that component like you see here. Okay, so come back, cross your fingers, and it doesn't work. I get the white screen of death. I was getting a little too cocky there, so uh, that was probably good for me. Uh, let's see what the problem is. I go to the console and we have an error. Cannot read property of undefined. It was trying to read name. Okay, so it looks like the issue was in our assignment component, it's trying to read name here, but uh, for some reason assignment is undefined rather than an object. So what I would do is I would check, okay, well, am I passing in an assignment when I call this component? Let's see. I come up, we iterate over it. No, we don't. I forgot to pass in the assignment. I remembered to loop, but I forgot to pass in the assignment. So let's fix that. And with any luck, that should solve the problem. And it does. Okay, very cool. So now um, we have a little spacing issue. But other than that, I think we're up in business here. So have a look. Here is our component tree. Here's our root component that consists of all of our assignments. That component consists of two assignment lists, and each of those lists consists of any number of assignments. This one has one, this one has two. So now just a couple more things and then I will let you go. First up, we need a little bit of spacing there. So if I switch back to all of our assignments, um, here's what we could do. I'm gonna wrap all of this within a, uh, maybe a section like so. And then because I'm using Tailwind, there's actually a space Y uh, class I can use that will add a certain amount of space between each of the direct children. So if I come back and refresh, this should work. And yeah, if you're curious at all, you can see here's what it's doing. It will find the next sibling of any element that's not hidden and add the necessary margin top and margin bottom. And yeah, that's an easy way to solve the problem. Okay, so my final bit of cleanup is back in my assignments component, if we scroll down, we have these computed properties. And these names are a little verbose. They were verbose because originally we had them within a single index.html file that wasn't linked to assignments, which means we could have had reactive data associated with the user or theme or settings or, or other areas of the page that weren't exclusive to assignments. But now, everything related to assignments is stored here, which means I can simplify things drastically. Do I really need to call this in progress assignments? Why not um, in progress? And same thing here. Do I need to call this completed assignments? Why not completed? And that should update these as well. Okay, but we can actually even take this a little bit further. If you think about it, these computed properties are ways to filter assignments, right? So if down the line we want to introduce a new way to filter assignments, like give me the ones that are oldest. Well, right now I would need to create another computed uh, property, right? Or what if we did this instead? What if I just have a computed property called filters? And this could contain an object of any number of filters that we provide, including in progress and completed. So that would look like this, because really these are just simple little operations. So I don't have a problem storing them together. So I'll move all of this. And yeah, 
if a few months from now we want to add another filter, it's as easy as adding uh, an additional property here. And I think that's a good way to go. Okay, so now I can get rid of these, switch back, and this can now be filters.inprogress, and this one can be filters.completed. Okay, and with that, cross your fingers, yeah, everything is still working. So now what you see here, almost to the T, is exactly how I would go about structuring and building a little assignments feature like this. So now down the line, when we wanna take it a little further and add additional features, it's gonna be that much easier. All right, I hope you learned a bit. Let's move on to the next episode.